Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll go over one more problem from lead code. The problem name is count servers that communicate. So let us go over a problem statement directly. The problem statement goes like this, that you are given a map of a server center represented as an M cross N integer matrix that is named as grid. Now where one means that the cell there is a server and zero means that there is a no server. As you can see in the diagram, so there is a grid that is given to you in this first example, it's a one two by two grid and uh, uh, one means that there is a server right here in the first row. So this is the first row, second row. Okay. In the first row, in the first column, it is one server and in the second row, second column, there is one more server. Fine. Now it is mean that two servers are set to communicate if they are like if they are on the same row or on the same column. So two servers can only communicate that in that way. Return the number of servers that can communicate with any other server. Cool. So uh, just find out any server that is in a communicating state that can communicate to any other server. It doesn't matter which server, but it can communicate to any other server. And if a server is that that is isolated, cannot communicate to any no other servers, then you have to neglect that. Now in this example, as you can see, this server cannot communicate to any other server. Like there is no one more computer on the same row or in the same column, same, like same for this. Uh, now, if we come down to this, this computer can communicate to this as well as this computer can communicate to this and this computer can communicate to this. Similarly for this, this server can communicate to this and vice versa. This can communicate to this vice versa, but this cannot communicate to anyone and thus it is left out. So total number is the number you have to print out is how many servers can communicate. Okay. So as you can see, that is four. Now what you can do here is that in this grid, that is M cross N grid, you have to output that how many servers can communicate. You can pause out this video, try to think over of your own, how you can do about for this problem. It's not too much difficult. You can directly see that the main intuition for this problem is that you have to see whether there are more than some computer on the same row. So you have to find out for like how many computers are there in the same row and same column. Can you think over that in that direction? First, you have to easily find out how many computers are there in the same row and same column. Fine. And then what you can do next is for every computer, you just have to check that ki if this computer is in a community commuting state or not communicating state or state or not. How you can check that for a particular computer to be in a communicating state, there should be at least one more computer in the same row and the same column. Then only you can take that as in a communicating state or else not. So that's a very simple observation. If I can just draw it out for one example, if let's take you have a grid like this and uh, just randomly draw out some computers. Okay. So let's say that one computer is here, one computer is here, one computer is here and one computer is here. Uh, that's it. Okay. Now these computers can communicate with each other. Uh, it, this computer will not. So what you will do here is that you have to first make a map like two vectors that is one for the column wise and one for the row wise. Then what you can do is you have to fill that ki how many computers are there in the particular row. Okay. So uh, for this, as you can see, I'm talking about this. So there are four points Four these are the four, uh, as you can see, uh, columns. First column, there are two computers or two servers, whatever you can say. There is only one. There is actually here in this line, there is one, there is zero. And in the first line also there is zero. Similarly for, uh, as you can see, for this line, there is zero. For this line, there is one. For this line, it is two. For this line, it is one. Okay. Now you can iterate over every, so you can actually it like generate this. How you can generate this? Like you can do this in O of n square. You can iterate over every point and update it in the same, like in the, uh, what you can say, column as well as in the row. Okay. For like you can iterate over this whole matrix. And whenever you find out a server, you can update that there is a particular server and update the particular row as the, as well as column. Fine. After doing that, what you'll do? In the end, you'll again do an O of n square or O of not n square exactly O of n into m because it can be different. You have to iterate over the matrix again. And what you will do, you have to check that whether I want to take this server, whether it is in a communicating state or an isolated server. If it is a isolated server or not, if it is a communicating state, there should be at least like two, like more than two computers because this is already taken. I have to find out that there is at least one more computer in the same row. Okay. In the same row or in the same column. Now that can be checked here because we can just check that whether there's one more computer. So there is one, which means that there is no computer in the same row, but there's one more computer in the same column. So I can take that. Similarly, I'll iterate over everything. And when I come to this, it, it will tell that there is only one computer in the, in this particular row 
and only one component in this particular column. So I cannot take that. Similarly, you just count all of them and then print it out. That's the whole logic for this problem. Nothing much more. Let us move down to the actual uh, code port part of this video. We'll first find out the dimensions of the grid. Okay, make a row and column that is row for row and column for column. And then what you'll do, you'll iterate over the whole matrix of uh, the whole matrix using two for loops, nested, nested for loops, and just check that whether a particular grid is giving a server. If it is giving a server, what you'll do, you'll update the particular row as well as column increase by one because everything is initialized with zero and then you'll increase by one. Just thus finding out the column frequency and the row frequency, how many servers are there. And then total is the total amount of servers that are communicating state. Again, iterate over the whole grid. Okay. So now the condition is if the particular grid is one, which means that there is a server down there also, and either of them is true. Either there is a in this particular row, the row is greater than or equal to two, which means that there are more than two computers in the particular row, or there are more than two computers in the particular column. And it is in a or state, but it is and with this condition. I hope you get the point. So this is like a condition you have to satisfy. If this condition is satisfied, the total will increment by one. That is, there is a server that we are on that is in a communicating state. Take that and in the end, print that answer. So I hope you get the point how we have write down the code for this problem as well as the logical part. So thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one till then keep coding and bye.